So we're live. And uh, we're live. We're live and alive. Hi guys. Uh, this is Igor and this is... I'm Brian. Brian. And um, you probably know all of us. And right now it, we're doing something really amazing. Uh, we are filming the video we're planning to make. And at the same time we're going live. So... There's for cameras every, everywhere. Yeah, camera is everywhere. We have about three cameras at this moment. Yeah. And we're going to talk with you as well. But primarily, we're going to talk today is AeroPress versus American Press. This is just what we got it. Those versus Espro Press and versus French Press. So that's basically main topic. You yeah. feel free to kind of ask the questions talk with us this is great opportunity for you and we're just gonna go through this and um, make sure um, make sure to answer all all of your questions if you have any so I need to get the laptop so we can see the comments because oh, yeah. they are on the phone but uh, I have to um, I'll come back okay oh yeah well, that's true we're not going to be able to see any comments otherwise. So if you've said anything, we're sorry if we've missed you, but thank you for saying hello. Uh, but uh, if anyone's tuning in there, we're, we're glad to have you. This is our first time going live, and uh, we're live here from our studio. We've been uh, shooting videos all day. I think I see a couple of a test and a hi. Hi there. Sorry, it's hard for me to to read because it's a little bit far away, but hello. How are you guys? Thank you for tuning in. Um, so as Igor was saying, I'm Brian uh, here with French Press Coffee, and Igor is getting a couple things that we need to be able to go. Hello there. How are you guys? Um, so we can see some comments. It's just it's a little harder. Nice t-shirt. Thank you. It's, it's special for... Special for FrenchPressCoffee.com. The question is, of course, do you have French press? Do you got French press? So, uh, Long Island, hey, how you doing, Long Island? I hope I hope I don't sound too silly when I say that. Hello, how are you guys? We've been shooting all day. We've been geeking out here, uh, running, you know, doing what we do best, which is testing out coffee gear and. And figuring out what uh, what gives you know the absolute best um, coffee and things like that. Just about to buy one. What are you just about to buy? Are you buying a French press? Are you buying a uh, are you buying an American press? What are you looking for? I'm curious actually. Someone was saying they're just about to buy. Yeah. So why why don't you lead on the uh, questions? So they're yeah. all here, and um, I think we're gonna start. So. Hi everybody, I'm Igor, founder of FrenchPressCoffee.com and this is Brian. Um, we've been working for so long time, I think he knows me more than uh, my wife in reverse. <laughs> uh, we've been shooting all day long today, kind of tired, Brian had... I drink a lot of coffee, it's okay. Yeah, uh, he started with cold brew and then went on. But, I just worked uh, my way up. Yeah, so... Do you want to talk and uh, answer the question? If you guys have questions, feel free to ask them. Uh, this is live. The shorter version will be available because, again, for everybody who just stepped in, we have three cameras here. We're shooting the sound, two cameras. We're talking with you. But main focus today is the difference between French press, Espro press, American press is something new and the Aero press. So a lot of people are asking what's the heck is the difference and that's that's why we're going to talk about it. So and Matt Brown just asked the the question of the hour which is what is the difference between American and French press and I'm going to tell you in just a moment Matt. So thank you for asking that cuz it's a good question. Um, it's a very good question and there's another one never had American press what's the difference yeah so sounds like that's the first thing we need to just yeah. knock out here what's the difference between American press and French press and by the way we do have full review 
we finished today so you're gonna see like full in-depth step by step how to use it and blah 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 but Brian gonna tell you the difference we spent about four hours today just <laughs> on that American press. We spent a lot of time. So without stuff. further ado, uh, <laughs> Brian, go ahead and talk about the difference between American press and the French press. Yeah, for sure. Um, so and by the way, look at this. Look at this. Oh yeah, this is cool. Yeah. Tweeted what? Coffee sent me some some special coffee. That was like the first thing I got today was this this coffee gift from Tweeted Coffee, which was really cool. And it says what? It says, Brian, we love your coffee channel. Your videos are very educational and help people get a better cup of coffee. All the best, Tweeted Coffee team. <coughs> Thanks, guys. That was nice. Okay, that they're waiting. Happy. All right, you're waiting, let's do it. Um, which is better for entry level beginners? Okay, cool, so we're gonna, we're gonna cover all of those things right now. So bear with me if I miss a couple questions i'm going to see if i can catch everything and here be short be short we'll be quick about have this. a lot of things to cover yeah and we're limiting ourselves to a certain amount of time because otherwise we could just go for like ever um yeah. okay the difference between a french press and an american press american press is a new way to brew is really what it breaks down to this is the american press it's uh it's actually made by a company uh called the wayward studio llc in chicago and uh, so we got it and we were kind of, we were very interested to check it out. What it really breaks down to, here's the difference. Bottom line, if you really don't like cleaning out your French press, then that's probably the biggest difference here is that it's easier to clean an American press than it is a French press. I, honestly, that was the biggest thing that I saw that is the major difference if I'm talking about like the biggest standout feature of the American and press. show why. Yeah, is, is that it's really easy to clean because of this capsule. So there's a capsule on the bottom that you fill with your coffee grounds. And that capsule has a 100 micron steel filter on the bottom, a mesh filter. And then you fill this with coffee grounds about 21 to 24 grams is what we saw. It's usually about seven grams of coffee for each Every eight ounce, I mean, it's, four, uh, ounces. four ounce. Yeah. yeah. Seven grams of coffee to every four ounces of water. So, you know, we were using, because this is a 12 to 14 ounce container, we wanted to just kind of play around with it a little bit. We were aiming for about 21 to 24 grams of coffee ground at just about medium grind. That was where we found the best, and you'll see this in the video. But, so that's what's different is that this has this pod that you fill with coffee and then you brew. So when you're pressing down, because you're gonna pour your hot water into the carafe, and then you'll just kind of place this here, push the lid down and you press. And so the cleaning is one thing. The other thing is different is the fact that you're using pressure to push water through that coffee pod. There is no full immersion. And there's no full immersion, right. And that's, that's the other biggest thing is that when we're talking about a French press, with a French press, you add your coffee grounds, you pour your water in, you let it bloom a little bit. That is more full immersion. And then as you brew, that's complete immersion because your grounds are immersed in the water that is becoming your coffee. That doesn't happen in the American press. So that's probably the biggest difference is the cleaning and the fact that it's not necessarily full immersion in the American press versus the French press. If you're looking for um, and I'm going to lead on this and you uh, check the comments. So if you're looking for French press style coffee, you're not going to necessarily get with American press. This is completely different experience. Yeah. Uh, you cannot say it is like a French press because there is a full immersion method with French press. And, and this is press. goes to the AeroPress as well. A lot of people right now, and this goes to another question, what's the difference between AeroPress then and the American press? Well, you really cannot compare them either. Yeah. Because the way how like AeroPress works, you know, you, um, you add your coffee grounds, you add your water, you add, uh, and then you, you have full immersion, you let it steep, and it, you use inverted methods, right? Uh, so you let the coffee bloom and um, uh, extract and everything in the full amount of water yeah. and then you press it. Yeah. Here you still press it, you still use the pressure, but the coffee in the capsule itself. Right. 
So it is using pressure, but we were not able to get same taste profile as from French press or from AeroPress. It's not, it's completely different method. So French press, full body coffee, the American press, I would say it's very fruity. You can extract a lot of flavors out of it, but it's not gonna be uh, as the French press. And with AeroPress, you can get espresso style coffee and stuff like that. You, we were not able to successfully do that with American press because you cannot use the finer grinds here. So we yeah. had some uh, questions about it. We tested it and we came up with the con conclusion it is completely new way of doing things. Yeah, which, so, you know, is, I mean, and we point this out in the, in the video is that the French press was a different way of brewing coffee some long time ago. <laughs> and yeah. the AeroPress, which is still kind of relatively new, was a new way of brewing coffee. So really it's just, it's a new way of brewing um, a cup of coffee. And probably the other biggest difference would be, I mean, you can just see this in the yeah. size here. Look at the size of this Espro Press. And this is Espro Press. It's another way of brewing coffee. So if let's say you don't like the grit, yeah. uh, because if you compare the mash here, you're gonna see, you can see through it. It's, it's uh, pretty thin. Pre yeah, and Enough. the biggest problem is with this French press, once you press it, you're still extracting your coffee. So you really cannot keep your coffee after you press it. You need to put it in your cup, you need to drink it right away or whatever. So yeah. Espro offer a completely different solution for this. If you look at this filter design, once you press here, this will not allow contact water and the coffee grind. So the salute, I mean, the Espro offering basically once you press it here, coffee on the bottom, water, uh, your coffee on the top, completely separate. You can keep it for 20 minutes uh, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Extraction not going to happen. Yeah. Where with French press, extraction still happening. And if you keep it like six minutes afterwards, you're going to get bitter coffee. It's yeah. not going to happen here. Right. If if you want, like, uh, you don't like the cleaning part because here we have to admit it with Espro. By the way, it has also a double filtration system, uh, which basically I personally use the Espro press for a long time. Yeah. You will not get the grit in your coffee, but you're still going to get your coffee oils and everything. So that's nice. And that's and, the question Matt was asking is, yeah. do you get the oils in the American press like you do in the French? Yes, you do, Matt. You, you still get the oil. We did a whole slew of different test uh, presses today. I don't think we have. Yeah, um, the, the, the reason, yeah, the reason why you will get the metal filter. Yeah. It doesn't matter how fine the metal filter is. Yeah. Coffee grounds, uh, I mean, coffee oils will pass through. So if you look. There is a full metal mesh filter. Again, here you have two filters, but they still metal. Yeah. So metal one, metal two. Yeah. So uh, you can add the paper filter here. And what's going to happen is paper as uh, what is that? Is it physics or what? We'll absorb the coffee oils. It's finer than, than the metal yeah. could ever really hope to be, and it'll actually collect the oils, which is why a lot of people prefer the AeroPress, because an AeroPress using a paper filter, which is honestly how I usually brew with it, um, I mean, we've talked about using, you know, different filters, um, such as metal mesh filters and things like that with the AeroPress, but I still brew using the paper filter and one of the reasons for that is it's really like the cleanest brew that you're going to get yeah. because it'll collect those oils. So, you know, some, some people really like that. I don't really care about coffee oils. I kind of prefer it a little bit because I like the taste. Let's talk about uh, oils. There is two primary oils, coffee stove and coffee oil, I believe. Mm -hmm. And it has pluses, pluses and minuses. There was research uh, by some kind of university, I don't remember which one, and they said, if you're consuming Turkish or French press style coffee in the large amounts, there is chances that your cholesterol, bad cholesterol or whatever will go high. Yeah. Well, I think this is real problem if you drink like, they stated about eight cups per day. 
That's a little, that's a little yeah, crazy. Yeah, so that's number one. <laughs> number two is actually Kafistol or Caviol, I don't remember which one, actually shown that it will prevent the liver cancer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think if you're consuming one, two, three, four cups of coffee, unfiltered coffee, and you will get antioxidants and coffee oils or whatever, it's going to do more good for you than bad. Yeah. That's why, plus, when you get that rich cup, bold cup of coffee out of French press, when it's unfiltered coffee, um, I think it's just, to me, better experience in the first place. So, um, yeah, this is, this is an interesting, there's a, I mean, there's a but, very long study on this, if you ever yeah. want to look into it. There's a lot of study that's been done as to the way that coffee can affect cholesterol metabolism, things along those lines. It's suffice to say, it's, we're not doctors, so we can't really say anything yeah, to... It's not medical advice, you know, for sure. Don't, don't yeah. listen to us with respect to that. But the bottom line is, if you read through some of this, the oil is not necessarily the worst thing on the planet, but some folks really prefer it because when you do take the oil out, the flavor profile changes. Yes. And that was the big thing that I saw and that we saw as we were playing around here and getting to know the American press, because today was literally my first time ever even holding this. Um, the flavor profile was really, really, really different. Um, it was, it was so different that I, I mean, I was able to pick out which one I liked more when I broke it right down. And, and that's something that depends if, if, you know, if you're picky about your coffee, you want to experiment a little bit. And it also depends on how much you want to spend because I mean, let's face it, you can get into a French press. If you go to frenchpresscoffee.com, you can get into a French press without having to spend a lot of money. Yeah. Um, the American press comes in at a little bit higher price point, so you kind of have to make that decision on to, if that's the thing And let's for you. talk about pricing. Yeah. Um, I think this is excellent um, point. The most affordable way to go uh, with uh, French press style coffee or whatever you call it, uh, I think it would be absolutely AeroPress number one. Yeah. It's 30 bucks, around 30 bucks, and you can start to make right away your coffee. Yeah. So the second option is would be I would say either Espro Press or classic French press. We have different versions of it. So Espro has this is um, Espro P3 model. It's a um, entry level model, and it has uh, plastic carafe, but the glass I mean uh, plastic okay. body yeah. uh, cage. I would say plastic cage, and it has. Uh, to me, most important part is the glass and the safety lock. Safety lock and the, the filter. Yeah. Filter is uh, plastic. It's BPA free, free, folate free, and whatever free. But uh, this is the entry level uh, French press style coffee from Espro, and you can start with classic glass, and you can uh, go with ceramic. They are at higher point. Uh, ceramic has better heat retention and then you can go all the way to stainless steel double wall where it's gonna work as the French press and the thermos yeah so then I would say right now we introduce the American press that's about 79 bucks yeah. so this is 30 79 this start from 40 bucks um, and this is also around 40 bucks so that's your entry point, and you can go up to like stainless steel version. I don't have it here. That's why uh, in the studio. Yeah. So Brian, after he broke few. So if you look for the long run, broke I think a lot of French press. It's a lot cheaper to buy stainless steel, my opinion, because yeah. it's gonna last you for the rest of your life. Period. I mean, yeah. what's gonna happen with stainless steel? The only drag is you can't see the brewing. Yeah. Which, like, honestly, is not a big deal because. Like in my house, we basically brew a 32 ounce French press in our stainless steel and then we like pour it into cups and drink it immediately. So it's, it doesn't really matter if, we're, if we can't see what's happening in there, we know how long we need to spend brewing. And then after that, we, you know, we time ourselves, we pour the coffee out and we drink it, it doesn't over extract and it's yeah. fine. And yeah, like I'm never gonna break it ever. It'll be with me forever, which yeah. is great because I have broken a lot of these, but that is also why I really dig the Espro because the Espro has the safety lock and this is like- That's the, extra layer of protection. It's just the coolest thing ever. Like if I did this with the Bodum right now, it would probably break the Bodum. Yeah, that's usually what happens. Like, why you did go you go to that? wash it and 
and it Whoa. just falls out and breaks. Yeah. And you don't do that with the S Pro. And the cool thing about this is that even on this P3, which is huge, I mean, this is a giant French press, and it's less expensive, the S Pro still gives you that that lock. So um, so that's really the, the big thing. Yeah, this, the stainless steel is a good way to go. That's what Slow Lake Honey was saying. Um, yeah, if you can go through the questions, and I'm going to uh, talk about the materials itself. Yeah, yeah. So there is a lot... Um, a lot of different different materials materials available. So, classic French press available, uh, and I'm going to talk about carafe. So glass. So problem with the glass, it can shatter. You can break it. The plus, like Brian mentioned, you can see the process. Uh, so you really enjoy. You know, you pour your coffee grounds and you add the water. You press it. You you know you're in heaven, right? So that's why I do it. Yeah. <laughs> the problem is it's breakable and the heat retention is not as good. So the next level would be the ceramic. Ceramic available in different colors. Uh, so it is nice. So you can buy blue, black, whatever. So if you want to match your kitchen or whatever. Uh, so that would be a good option. Uh, price point is a little bit higher. Uh, better heat retention. So if you preheat your ceramic French press, it's gonna hold your coffee for about 20, 30, 40 minutes. But again, remember, extraction is still happening. So that's kind of like a drug. Um, yeah, you can keep your coffee, but you know, we recommend to pour into uh, something like, uh, give me the Hario. So once you, um, yeah. So once you brew your French press coffee, you can pour in a thermos or, um, uh, coffee server like this and keep your coffee here yeah. and then you go to stainless steel version where you know it's worked like a thermos and the coffee can be there for up to two hours right. so um, American press made of plastic the carafe made of plastic there is no other options at this making of this video maybe it will be available the AeroPress also available um, in only one option is plastic Espro press available in three different, um, I would say, three main different options. So they have this Espro travel press. We don't, I mean, I just use it to drink water, but uh, it's like for people on the go. Uh, you press it, and uh, I'm not sure if I have a, oh, right there. So they have smaller filter, and you press it and use it as the thumbler or as the coffee maker. So it's stainless steel, so you can toss it, you can break it, or try to break it. Um, <laughs> Good luck with that. It looks like we tried with this one. Uh, yeah, it's fell a couple of times. Um, I would highly still okay. recommend to buy like stainless steel where there's no paint because I, uh, uh, it's fell very hard in the mountains and I, you know, my wife were not happy about it. But, but it's, it still works. Yeah, to me, this is really doesn't matter. But for someone, it is important. So the next one would be the plastic cage with the glass carafe. The third option is stainless steel cage again with the glass carafe. And the last option, yeah, it's gonna look like that. And the last option is the stainless steel. So the filter filtration system is all the same on all of them. So this is about the materials, very quick. Um, they have also one option where it was a copper, copper finish. It's beautiful. If you if you have like a copper kitchen I think it's gonna match it very well yeah it's so, a little easier to customize it as um, well. do you see other questions there I think we got everything the the question there had been you know why like the uh, the the coffee oil a little bit more and, it, and really honestly as Matt and I were saying it just kind of gives you more of the flavor profile um, Matt was saying what's the heat retention of the American press it's plastic yes it's it's double wall BPA free plastic. So that was something that I was slightly thrown off by um, because it's it's all plastic. Heat retention, I'll, I will give it this. When we poured yeah. about 200 Fahrenheit water into it, I was able to pick it up and hold it and I wasn't burning my hand, it just felt warm. I would give like 40 minutes you can keep your coffee in it. About. Yeah. And, yeah, and you could let it sit because it's not going to keep 
infusing because all of your coffee grounds are at the bottom and your coffee, your actual liquid coffee is at the top. So heat retention is pretty good, especially because it's double walled. Is it better than ceramic or, well, than ceramic, really? Probably not. Ceramic is going to retain for the longest. I mean, you can no, leave. Stainless steel. Stainless steel. Well, double yeah, that's true. Stainless steel double wall. I'm sorry. It's stainless like steel thermos. double wall. It's like a thermos. You can leave it in there for a long time. Um, so somebody asking about cold brew. Um, yeah. Personally, I use Espro Press for cold brew daily. And this is the reason why. So when you do cold brew, first of all, there it takes 24 hours, right? So, so let's see. Yay! I think we're no. This is a little battery again. Where? I think it's okay. Yeah, hopefully. I'm um, gonna hope. Yeah. So, Sorry. Sorry let, about that. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about cold brew uh, for a sec. So, when you do cold brew, it takes about 24 hours to make it. So, it is a long process. So, it's not like you get your cup, get your press press it you're done no so that's why when you make cold brew you want to make a batch yeah. so and it goes then it goes to the volume so if you uh, I mean we've done the video how to make cold brew with AeroPress yeah. but you're gonna get just one cup right and that's it so what if you have two or three cups per day so you need to make a larger batch and so I use Esper because this is about 32 ounce uh, uh, press. And what I do like about it, that double filtration system, the biggest problem with the uh, cold brew is they, um, you need to use some kind of filter to get rid of the grit. And if you do that with French press, once you press it, uh, you have to go through the paper filter. Espro Press completely eliminate that process. So you add the coffee grounds, you add your cold water, you, you let it brew for 24 hours, and then you press it, and then you just pour it to your uh, glass bottle or thermos or whatever, and you keep it. You can store it for up to two weeks. So I first, when I start to do the cold brew, I use the French press. Like I said, the paper filter Filtration afterwards was not convenient to me. This is simply like not big enough. Uh, I never tried cold brew with American press, and I don't think it's gonna work because there is no immersion, full immersion here. Yeah, there were people saying that they had yeah, done so, it, but I, I don't. I don't think so. Yeah. I think I would do it the way that Igor is talking about. And here it's a lot easier. You can make a large amount of coffee. And you don't have to do paper filtration afterwards. So yeah. that would be my answer. So any other questions? So, um, so some of you guys were talking about grinders. And uh, and Matt was saying he got a burr grinder after using the blade for decades. Never looked back. Yeah, definitely, Matt. I mean, a burr grinder is always the way to go. Blade grinders just don't work nicely for coffee at all. And yeah, let me explain to you why it's make the difference. So... If you take and magnify everything, and let's go to grotesque. Ah, thank God. Okay. So, the magic. Okay. As much magic as is possible. So, um, so what, what is the question? Cheap French press or something? Fighting the battle. Oh. We, we're going to be press. offline in a second. Believe me, the battery will die. Yeah, we've been having all kinds of tech issues. But we appreciate you guys hanging out with us. So we'll get to a couple questions, and then we'll kind of wrap it all up. Um, there's this cheap French press and a much more expensive AeroPress. Should I save up for the AeroPress first, then buy the French press, or buy the French press, then the AeroPress? I think you should buy both. And you should go to FrenchPressCoffee.com. It's two different things. Yeah. And they serve different purpose. Yeah. I really, really, really love the AeroPress, but when I really love the AeroPress is when I'm traveling because coffee, and I travel a lot, and coffee in hotel rooms is just bad. And you can make really good coffee with an AeroPress, and you can make and you can make really good coffee anywhere. But with an AeroPress, it's great because you can take it traveling with you. 
So you should, I would say, yeah, I agree with Igor. You should um, go with both because they both are going to brew differently. They complement each other. Yeah. And if you have to make coffee for like 10 people or two people even, I mean, you're going to spend like two hours just plunging back and forth where with French press, you make it and you serve it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they're different purpose, different uh, meaning. But uh, in regards of cold brew, we had a question. What was the question? Um, let's see. Matt said that he's using our static trick, which is pretty cool. Thanks, Matt. Oh, for uh, for the grinder. Yeah, that one works. I use that one it a does. lot, actually. And it's zero dollars. Yeah, it's zero bucks, which is really good. And you don't get coffee everywhere. Um, cold hot coffee. Put in fridge. E fridge equals cold coffee. Why do some people complicate cold brewing? Keep it simple. True, you can cool hot coffee and um, and then... No, no, no. I mean, the, you the, could, I but it's he, not... Well, he, I think he's talking about when you brew uh -huh. and you, you brew on ice. Oh, right. So it's there is two cold brew techniques or methods, but yeah. they're completely different. Yeah. Some people call it cold brew and it's Japanese method where you do pour over and you have ice on the bottom and... When it's brew, the coffee hits the ice, cool down immediately, and yeah. that's one method method of doing. That's where a watery. other method is that where you have your coffee grounds, you put, you emerge them, submerge them in the cold uh, water, and you brew for twenty four hours. So yeah. it is completely two different methods, mm -hmm. and let me tell you the major difference between those two. So when you do Cold brew over ice, yes, you do preserve the freshness. Basically, it's the same idea. You pick up the apple and you put it in the refrigerator right away. Cold, slow down the reactions, and you have your coffee uh, fresher longer. But there is the problem. When hot water hits the coffee grounds, there is one chemical reaction that's happening. And when cold water hits the coffee, there is other... Different. Well, there's not other chemical reactions, but there are different, uh, different reactions happen. And let me explain to you like in a simple way. So uh, if you, let's say, have a pan, grease pan with grease, and you take the hot water and you wash it, fat dissolves in hot water faster, mm -hmm. where if you take it, wash it in the ice water, cold water, fat not, not going to be dissolving faster. So apply that theory to the coffee. And the biggest difference is that the cold brew coffee, which you brew in the cold water, is going to be 67% less acidic. Where you take pour, uh, the iced coffee over, I mean, when you brew your hot coffee over ice, you simply have your hot coffee. So the chemical, uh, chemical reactions would be completely different. That's what I'm basically saying. And as a result, you're going to get different profile. And I think a lot of people are saying that Japanese method cold brew is more flavorful and stuff like that. Yes, because you use hot water. You simply like extract everything mm -hmm. and uh, you get your flavors and everything. Where with cold brew, you're not going to get that fruitiness. Uh, you're not going to get same flavor profile when you do cold or hot water. Right, because your, your, your coffee extracts different. Yeah. When you extract and with hot water, your coffee blooms differently than simply soaking your grounds in cold water. So, but but that kind of depends, you know. I mean, because I like, I really like iced coffee, um, but it you know I like different flavor profiles. It's two different me. things. So yeah, it's don't, just two very different don't things. mix them up. Be very specific. And the cold brew where the coffee brews in. Cold water gonna be more chocolatey, mm -hmm. uh, more chocolate flavor. They're not gonna be fruitiness. You're not gonna taste that. And yeah. when you do cold brew with in cold water, I highly, highly recommend you to use fresh coffee beans. Mm -hmm. It makes a huge difference. I mean, if with hot water you can add some stuff like play and uh, you know increase the time and stuff like that, yeah. you cannot do with cold water. Yeah. So the fresh coffee beans is the key. You got, you will get 
absolutely the best cold brew out of fresh beans, period. Yeah. So let's move on. It's very funny. I Any think other questions? I only saw, uh, so there's one, and um, we'll get to that one in just a minute about manual grinder or electric. Or um, until the phone dies. Or until the foam dies. Yeah. There were a couple that we could do real quickly. Matt had asked if we tasted any plastic in the American press. No. I can't really taste any plastic. It it did taste... It tasted good. It didn't take, taste plasticky. It, no. You know, but... Um, usually when you open... Yeah, he's correct. When you usually open the, um, the plastic thingy, whatever it is, French press you or like... You like, smell it. You smell it. I, we didn't I didn't. Get, no. No. So, no, it, the American press was good in that respect. It didn't taste like plastic, which was great, even though, and yes, it, it is. It smell as a plastic. It is all plastic. Up, yeah. The box. So, luckily, because it's BPA-free, uh, I'm going to assume that it shouldn't, you know, as we usually say, if it's BPA-free, it won't really impart any flavor onto the coffee. So, that was good. Uh, there was a question about how often you should change your screen on your French press, and... Um, that kind of depends, honestly. I mean, you don't have to change them that frequently. Well, once you have the coffee grounds passed through the mesh filter, yeah. what you need to check is to make sure this um, this outer part is okay. And usually what you need to do sometime, just open them up like, like so. Yeah. So basically what you're doing when this mesh goes through this round uh, glass carafe it's you know there is no space yeah so and if you see holes well replace them yeah if it if the if the mesh starts to get really oily and you can see that it's sort of consistently always brown and stained that would probably be time to clean it but i just take my french press apart pretty frequently and clean everything up really well and if you do that you probably won't really ever have to replace that mesh filter Unless um, it's cheap. Unless it's, yeah, if it's a cheaper one, like I've had French presses where the filter was really thin, you'll probably replace it pretty fre frequently because honestly it's going to, it's probably also not necessarily going to give you the best flavor in your coffee as well. It's the cheaper metal, you can sometimes taste that, and I, there's, if there's anything I dislike more than plastic flavor in coffee, it's metal flavor. That's not good. Um, metal grinder or electric, which is your preference, I guess meaning our preference, right? Uh... We both pretty much prefer. Well, you I would know. say both because yeah, I, I mean, both. if you travel, I had the Horlicks grinder here somewhere, but uh, their manual grinders they're also different. So, like, you cannot take this to. Um, Battery is gonna go soon. Um, 